While going live is easier these days, adding a guest, depending on what platform you're using, can still be a bit tricky. So today on the studio, we're going to talk about online podcasts and talk shows and give you some tips and tricks to make them better. So we're going to be using XSplit Broadcaster for all of this. Uh, setting up your microphone and your camera, probably the first thing you want to do. That's pretty easy to do in XSplit Broadcaster. Just add your sources. Then you want to add your guests. Now this can vary depending on what platform you're using. If you're using like Discord, Teams, or Zoom, you have to capture them as a separate source. So you need them in a separate window and then window capture and bring them in that way. Now, if you've got two monitors, this can be pretty advantageous in this situation because you can have your guests and everything over on one monitor and then you can have everything set up with your broadcast on another monitor and you can kind of move things around nice and easy. Personally, I like to use Skype. Now, Skype for content creators is a version that comes with NDI. NDI is incredibly useful because you can add your guests in as an individual source why is this useful? Let me tell you. So when someone calls in and you both have NDI enabled on Skype, they'll come into Exploit Broadcaster as an individual source. So rather than capturing just Skype or capturing just the screen and then having a kind of edit around it, crop stuff, move things around and put it where you want it to be, your caller is just going to come in as a guest. Now, this applies to absolutely everyone you have on the call. So if you have like five people coming in on one Skype call, if they all have NDI enabled, you will get five different sources listed in XSplit Broadcaster. This is incredibly useful because then you can add them all individually, resize them, move them around. Super simple. Seriously, the best way to do it, in my opinion. You can do it with other calls and like, they all have their advantages in quality and amount of people you can have on a call. That's a tip, by the way. That's just a content tip. Don't have too many people on a talk show over the internet at the very least, because due to delay, things are going to start getting confusing very fast and without everyone giving each other space and knowing to be professional in that way, like you let everyone finish talking before you come in. Most people we'll just talk <laughs> that'll happen so if you have like 10 people on a skype call with the delay it's gonna be crazy anyway back to my point i love skype just because you can add all those individual people and capturing the source is fine but personally if you can get people to use skype and you use an exploit broadcaster use ndi that's the best way to do it another quick tip if you have either the budget or you already have something like this like in your possession, use a laptop or a different computer to do your calls on. This saves on system resources, but it's also just nice and easy. You set it up with a capture card, same way you would say gameplay or any other sort of additional source that you're capturing with a capture card. And then you can pull in your calls that way. It just really saves a lot of system resources on your computer, which is already encoding a stream. Now you're doing like six Skype call <laughs> sources in one thing. That can honestly save a lot of resources and make everything run smoother. So that's another top tip. Now, if you want to add some production elements, if you have access to one, you could contact a designer, you could commission some overlays, get everything looking really fancy. But if you don't have those, Exploit Broadcaster has you covered. So you can use the matte source in order to create the lower thirds or text boxes or like backgrounds to your callers. Like you can create a little background to put the source on. That always looks pretty nice. You can use a text source to then add in the text for their names. You can then group these sources together and have them animating in and out by adding source effects to them. So when you change scenes, your little text box will animate in and animate back out when you change scenes again. Looks really professional, really simple to do, already built into XSplit Broadcaster, which is a huge bonus. So in your source settings, you can add a camera border to any of the callers that have come in. And you combine this with source presets. You can have guests come in and out of the show like dynamically. So they come in looking all nice with it, all the settings set up. Looks really good. One particularly useful element that you can have uh, for an online talk show is a countdown timer. 
at the beginning. And you can add these easily with custom scripts. You can also add these for be right back screens. If you need to use them, like you need to take a break real quick during the show, you can add a countdown timer for like a, a pre, like a break that you all know you're gonna have. Like we got 10 minutes in the middle where we all get to rest. Never a bad idea if you're doing a long talk show, but custom scripts, you can add a timer to it. Streaming with XSplit is pretty straightforward. Just when you first set it up, log into the platform you want to stream to and XSplit will automatically pick the best settings for your computer and your internet connection. I do, however, in the description have a list of some settings. If you want to go and be a bit more custom, there's some setting suggestions down below in the description, so check those out. For recordings, you want to set it to the highest possible quality and also set the audio to the highest possible bitrate. Something that's very useful actually in XSplit Broadcaster is you can enable multi-track recordings. Now this, if you are doing an audio version of your podcast that you're going to upload to say SoundCloud, then distribute on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you're putting your podcast, you've already got that audio as a separate track. So when you come to edit the videos, you'll have multiple audio tracks, but you'll have that audio as a separate track. Very useful. Also, you want to use multiple recording profiles because you can, whenever you set up a new streaming output, you can tick a box and XSplit will just automatically record every time you go live to the output. It will record exactly what you're broadcasting. But with multiple recording profiles, you can set it up so you're recording, say, each guest can be their own scene and you can be recording all of them individually. You can be recording just a view with all of the guests together. You could do that, just one screen with all the guests. This is very useful when you're gonna be posting this to say YouTube or anywhere after the fact, and you're gonna edit the video before you do that. You can do your zoom ins, you can do like, you know, if, something, if someone's a sign crazy, you can zoom in on them when they say it. It's a really useful tool for post-production, so be sure to enable that. One last important element is that your guests need to be able to see what's going on. This is very easy to achieve. What you need to do is set up XSplit Broadcaster as a virtual camera. Now this is already enabled. XSplit Broadcaster will already do this. All you gotta do is in Skype or Zoom, whatever you happen to be using, Select XSplit Broadcaster as your camera source. Now it's going to put out whatever the live scene is currently as your camera. This means all the guests can see exactly what's going on. They'll be able to see you because you will be a guest on your own show, possibly. Sometimes you're just the producer. Sometimes they can't, but they'll still be able to hear you through that. What this is super useful for is stuff like breaks, or for knowing if and when they're on and off camera, they can just see it right there. So that's super useful. Definitely set that up if you're gonna do an online talk show. Split view, that is a very useful feature and I'll tell you for why. So split view means you can be setting up your next scene before you push it live. So you can see what's going on in the next scene before you push it live. So as a producer, super useful. You need to add something on the fly, like if a guest starts talking about a particular meme they've seen that they found really funny or a particular video that they just watched that they were like, this is great. You can go into split view, you can pull that into the next scene, get it looking really nice, set it all up, then push it live. So people don't have to see you, because you, in XSplit you can, if you want to do it really fast, you can just drag and drop stuff directly into XSplit. And that's great if you want to move fast, but if you want to move fast and have some production quality, Split view is great for that because you can set it all up, then push it live. Then from a viewer perspective, it's just turned up on their screen like a new source, really nice, looks really good. Definitely use that as much as you can. Finally, if you're uploading it to YouTube, be sure to take a bunch of screenshots so you can make that perfect thumbnail. Now, we've got a video on this channel all about easy ways to make thumbnails, so check that out. But if you're taking screenshots to begin with, that is a part of that process so you're going to save yourself a bunch of time check out that video though it should be appearing somewhere around here it's worth watching because it's going to save you a bunch of time as with most things practice makes perfect don't be dissuaded if your first shows don't go amazingly as of all of us we're at the mercy of the internet as lewis taught me lewis from this channel taught me as a producer 
it's live streaming. Something's going to break. Like, as a producer, that honestly is a huge tip I can give you if you're trying to produce content with lots of people in it. Something's going to break. So don't be dissuaded these things will happen and be sure to add production elements as you find you need them because honestly, the content is the most important thing. When it comes to a podcast or a talk show, people are there for the content. These production elements make things look nicer. They make things run smoother. But the content is king. So focus on that and add the production elements as you need them. So what software do you use for video calls? We mentioned a bunch of them here. What one do you prefer? I prefer Skype because of the NDI stuff. But what ones do you prefer and why? Let us know in the comments. What are your favorite online podcasts or talk shows? Do you run one? What things have you run into that have made your life easier or harder? And with the harder ones, what solutions have you found to hopefully make those easier for you? Let us know in the comments below. And if you've liked this video, do give it a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel because we have a ton of videos like this that will hopefully educate and inform. So from here on the studio, I've been Chris Slight. Thank you for watching and we will see you very soon.